Good morning. Welcome to Thanksgiving at Knox Presbyterian in Minbrook. Um, service is a little different this morning. Uh, we, we have more songs than usual because the songs are coming from the Presbytery website, so we can broadcast them. We have permission to broadcast them. So there are a few more songs, and what we're not used to is standing up during our praises recently. So we're going to give that a try today um, with the other songs. And uh, so just enjoy being here and worshiping and thanking God for this incredible day and weekend and just being able to gather together um, spaced apart. Um, Pastor Nancy is on vacation and we welcome Elena Haskell from the Rock Herit. Uh, in Paris this morning. Also to let you know that we're getting ready to have a um, Zoom Bible study in November. We feel that some people just aren't quite ready to come together again for, for Bible study, so we're going to have another one online. Uh, probably Wednesdays, but if that doesn't work for you, let us know and we'll see if the day changes or not. Um, Mountainside had a vacation Bible school here uh, the very end of August for three days, and they have sent a thank you along, uh, letting them use the, our, our, uh, our facilities for those three days. Um, this morning we enter a time of worship with these words from Paul. Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. 1 Thessalonians 5.18 No matter what circumstances come our way, we have much for which to be thankful. As you prepare your hearts for worship this morning, praise the Lord for who he is and thank God for all his blessings. Let's gather in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for today. We thank you for everyone that is here online or have joined us in person. We thank you that we are yours and that you watch over us. And we thank you that during this time of pandemic, you have sheltered us. You have drawn us close. And we have made the decision whether to do that, whether to join in or to stay at arm's length. But we know that this has been a time of growing, of searching. And we come out today in wonder, in joy, knowing that we are your children and you are our Heavenly Father. Come, let us worship together. Amen. Uh, we have somebody who's coming up to sing for our call to worship. Psalm 100, so would you please uh, join me and read the bolded parts. Shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful songs. Know that the Lord is God. It is he who made us, and we are his. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. For the Lord is good and his love endures forever. His faithfulness continues through all generations.
The message this morning is a testimony from the Israelites, Psalm 107, verses 1 to 22. Oh, thank God, he's so good. His love never runs out. All of you set free by God, tell the world. Tell how he freed you from oppression. They rounded you up from all over the place, from, your, from the four winds, from the seven seas. Some of you wandered for years in the desert, looking but not finding a good place to live. Half starved and parched with thirst, staggering and stumbling on the brink of exhaustion. Then, in your desperate condition, you called out to God. He got you out in the neck of time. He put your feet on a wonderful road that took you straight to a good place to live. So thank God for his marvelous love, for his miracle of mercy to the children he loves. He poured great drafts of water down parched throats. The starved and the hungry got plenty to eat. Some of you were locked in a dark cell, cruelly confined behind bars, punished for defying God's word, for turning your back on the high God's counsel. A hard sentence and your heart so heavy and not a soul was in sight to help. Then you called out to God in your desperate condition. He got you out in the nick of time. He led you out of your dark, dark cell, broke open the jail, and led you out. So thank God for his marvelous love, for his miracle of mercy to the children he loves. He shattered the heavy jailhouse doors. He snapped the prison bars like matchsticks. Some of you were sick because you'd lived a bad life, your bodies feeling the effects of your sin. You couldn't stand the sight of food, so miserable you thought you'd be better off dead. Then you called out to God in your desperate condition. He got you out in the nick of time. He spoke the word that healed you, that pulled you back from the brink of death. So thank God for his marvelous love, for his miracle of mercy to the children he loves. Offer thanksgiving sacrifices. Tell the world what he's done. Sing it out. For those that are with us today, would you stand as we sing, There is a Redeemer.
A testimony from the life of Paul, 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 23 to 29, and Philippians 4, um, 4 to 12. In 2 Corinthians 11, Paul recorded a list of the hardships he faced throughout his life as a follower of Christ. I have worked much harder, been in prison more frequently, been flogged more severely, and been exposed to death again and again. Five times I received from the Jews the 40 lashes minus one. Three times I was beaten with rods. Once I was pelted with stones. Three times I was shipwrecked. I spent a night and a day in the open sea. I have been constantly on the move. I have been in danger from rivers, in danger from bandits, in danger from my own people, in danger from the Gentiles, in danger in the city, in danger in the country, in danger at sea, and in danger from false brothers. I have labored and toiled and have often gone without sleep. I have known hunger and thirst and have often gone without food. I have been cold and naked. Besides everything else, I face daily the pressures of my concern for all the churches. Who is weak and who do I feel not weak? Who is led into sin and I do not burn inwardly burn. Despite, these, despite all these hardships, Paul was still able to say in his letter to the Philippines, I have learned the secrets of being content in any and every situation, whether well-fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or in want. Paul rejoiced in the Lord even when he was in chains. God is greater than our weaknesses. God is faithful with all his promises and all life circumstances. God is to be forever praised. We stand once again as we praise God with Cornerstone.
He is our cornerstone, and we give him thanks today, every day, not just on Thanksgiving weekend. So I invite you now to just uh, shout out things that you are thankful for, things that strike your heart and um, give you joy when you know that God has provided for you. Those of you at home, you can thank them and shout them out too. I'm sure we'll hear them through the Spirit. <laughs> Sunshiny days. Time with family. Time with family. Isn't that precious? Time with health. health. is such an important thing these days to enjoy the blessings of health and the blessings of healing, too, that we can count on our Lord to fortify us and strengthen us. Anyone else? Education. education. We need all we can get, don't we? We need that education to move forward, to learn more, to uh, advance the world, to learn more about keeping our uh, earth safe, uh, cleaning it up from pollution, uh, education to move forward in uh, the health fields, to get it into all these crummy things that keep bugging us like the pandemic and cancer and those things. So yes, praise God for education and for those people that are the students of that education to forward that on. Anything else? Employment, Employment yes. Em purpose. I'm sorry? A sense of purpose. Yes, we all need purpose in life. We all need a goal. And we pray that God grants each one of us that goal and gives us insight to our path and where we should go. We think, um, I'm thankful for educators and pastors, and although it ties in with education, those are the people uh, that we, we are thankful for, that we can learn more of God's word, that we can be directed by people that have been given that special gift of ministry. We thank people like Elena, who will work with the raw carrot and work with uh, people to employ them and to um, minister in that, in that way. And again, give people a goal and, and a financial future as well. Let us come together in prayer. Heavenly Father, here we are. Here we are humbly before you at this moment to praise your holy name with gratitude within our hearts. We humbly bow before you and thank you for your faithfulness and love. You alone are the sovereign and almighty God. Lord, you know each one of us and you know everything about us, our thoughts, our actions, our words. You guide our paths and remain our refuge at all times even in these times and when we neglect to honor you. We thank you for your forgiveness and your mercies. You, Lord, never change. You are the same yesterday, today, and forever. Lord, you continue to provide us with all that we need. You have provided us with so much, and we give you thanks. Lord, we think of this world where we live and all the struggles around the world. May we learn better ways to be helpful to those who are hungry, to those that need shelter and rescue from wars and tyranny. Instruct us, Lord, so that we might better look after our earth and its environment. We pray that our oceans and lakes and waterways be freed of pollutants and that our people could have, all people could have a clear, fresh water to drink. Help us be your hands and feet that we might help our neighbors in need. Lord, we ask for insight, strength, and energy to share the good news of your Son, our Redeemer. May we stand strong in the name of Jesus Christ so that all people would know him. We thank you for healing of our loved ones. We thank you, Lord, for the comfort of the elderly, for wisdom in broken relationships, 
and for compassion for those who are grieving. We continue to thank you for those in the healthcare system at this time. Lord, we ask that they find renewed strength and energy in this fight against the pandemic and other illnesses that so many are burdened with. We thank you for all those that labor to heal and keep people safe and well. We thank you, Lord, for the hope you grant to those that remain faithful to you. Hope remains within our hearts and is part of your love for us. Thank you, Father, for these blessings. Father, may we honor you with each word we speak, each action we complete, as we reach out to those around us and each one we meet in thanksgiving and with the light of Christ. As Thessalonians says again, in everything give thanks, for this is God's will for you in Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name, amen. We'll call up Elena now to uh, give us our message and to tell us about the ministry that she's involved with at the Rockhead. Welcome, Elena. Good morning. Thank you so much for having us here today. I'm here with my husband, Phil. We live in Brantford, Ontario. We've been there for about five years. And uh, we currently go to the Presbyterian Church in Paris, where the Rock Herit was started. So I'm going to tell you a little bit more about myself and how I came across the Rock Herit, um, how it got started, and how it is doing missions. So I first heard about the Rock Herit because I was looking for a job. <laughs> so back pre-pandemic, um, I had a job lined up at a church that I was going to work at. I was really excited. I felt like I had arrived at where God wanted me to be, and then it didn't happen. <laughs> There's always various reasons, but um, it was really hard for me, and I kept looking, and I was working on my contentment, as Paul talks about, um, about where I was. I was working part-time at Starbucks, and I just, I really felt like God had something more for me, but um, I then had to accept to stay and be faithful there. But lo and behold, God did have other things for me. I just had to be patient and trust him. So. I was still looking and a friend sent me the raw carrot and I applied and I started there in February. So in the middle of the pandemic, I started working at the raw carrot and I've been there since then. Um, so missions, um, I was talking to Nancy and she mentioned something about talking about missions today. So I'm kind of tying that into my talk. Um, I don't know about you, but when I was growing up, when I heard people talk about missions or a mission, I often thought about overseas right? Um, the third world, feeding hungry children in Africa. So that was kind of what I thought missions was. And partly my parents did that. They were overseas. They were in Africa before they were married, and then they lived in Bangladesh. And we were in India um, as a family by the time when I was five to when I was eight. Um, and I did missions. I went to Mexico as a teenager, and I spent summers in Northern Ontario working with First Nation people on the reserves up there. But here I am today talking about a different sort of mission here in Southern Ontario. So I think, is this how I do this? There we go. Okay, so this is Rebecca and Colleen. Um, and this is a verse that meant a lot to them as they were, you know, struggling with starting the rock carrot and asking God, what does he actually require of us? And um, so in Micah 6, 8, it says, what does the Lord require or ask of you? to act justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with our God. So Rebecca's in the red there, and she is a go-getter, passionate, lover of Jesus, and issues of social justice. She likes to partner with marginalized people. She has a degree in international development, and she also spent five years doing mission work in Africa with the Presbyterian Church of Canada. She's married and has three children. And then Colleen, her, she says her partner in crime. <laughs> Colleen can handle multi-million multi dollar budget, something that I can't even say, and Rebecca and I definitely can't handle without her. So she has a nursing degree, and she's back to nursing since the pandemic started, but she's, we still get her one day a week to help handle our small budget. <laughs> we couldn't do without her. Um, and she works at a cancer site um, center in the Kitchener area. She's married, and she has four children. And I have a quote from Colleen. She believes that the best way to build up an individual is to improve the community which they live. Um, so I'm just going to share here now a short video 
about them explaining a little bit more. This was taken a couple of years ago, so things have changed a little bit, but. We believe that a hand up is way more awesome than a handout. For five years, we sat in the pews at church and watched a teenage girl named Amanda grow up. Because of her disability, she was marginalized, living in poverty and dependent on ongoing handouts. But we saw her potential. We saw someone who deserved the dignity of work. Amanda could thrive if given the right opportunity. Do you know that there are almost a million people in Ontario alone, like Amanda, living with a disability or mental illness? Many who want to and can work. That's why we decided to get out of the pew and do something. Over a cup of coffee, God ignited a passion in our hearts to give people the dignity of work in a simple but profound way, cooking gourmet soup. In 2014, The Raw Carrot was born. I'm Rebecca. And I'm Colleen and we are the co-founders of the Raw Carrot Soup Enterprise. Our model is simple. We use existing church kitchens, hire people on social assistance, and create tasty gourmet soup. In our first year, we hoped to sell $5,000 worth of soup. We sold $25,000 and quickly realized God had a bigger plan than we imagined. By 2016, other organizations had caught the vision and wanted to replicate. We now have 18 people employed at three sites. By growing together, we realized we would be stronger. We have a big dream, a vision to see people employed and flourishing across Canada. We've employed 18 of the 1 million. We need you to help us bring the raw carrot to people in communities across Canada, to be change makers and innovators together. Can one bowl of soup help change the world? You decide. Wow, I almost feel like I don't need to say anything else, but I have more to tell you, so sit tight. Um, so Rebecca and Colleen met Amanda um, 10 years ago. She was 13. She was friendly. She loved to play with the kids. She helped out in the nursery. She was reliable, punctual, um, but she did have a mild um, intellectual disability. And she had two parents who were already on Ontario Disability Support Program. Amanda can't read past a grade three level, and she has a general lack of confidence. She had no prospects after high school. Um, it seemed that her parents just wanted her to get diagnosed so she could go straight on social um, assistance. She did some employment training. Rebecca felt moved to drive her into Brantford every day, but a 20 minute drive and get her some training and readiness skills and a resume. And then she did have some interviews, but no job. And they really felt, weren't sure what else they could do. Um, but they kept having conversations, realistic conversations about what they could actually do to help Amanda. Um, if they couldn't find her a job, they decided, let's try to create her one. So, and they knew that there wasn't just Amanda. Um, as you said, there's one million people living in poverty, right? Um, and they saw other people right there in the church that also struggled um, on social assistance, that it was reaching into the benefit fund time and time again because they just couldn't make ends meet because you really don't have enough to live on social assistance. But they did want to work, some of them, and they just couldn't find jobs. Um, so it was out of this frustration that the soup, the raw, I keep saying the soup, <laughs> the raw carrot soup enterprise was born. Um, and the vision was to create meaningful work for individuals, as they said, who want to work and can work. Um, and it's simple, like Colleen said in the video, we use donated spaces, so we're in the kitchen um, of, of churches at this point. Um, we hire those who are already on Ontario Disability Services, and they prepare, cook, and package gourmet and delicious soup. And we sell in our communities. I don't know if we've made it as far as Binbrook, but we are in Ancaster and Hamilton and lots of other areas. You can check us out online. And then that money from the soup goes directly to pay the staff and to train new ones. So um, the way we keep going and the way that we're growing is through donations and grants. Um, but that money does go right back into the staff. Uh, we're now in our seventh year and we have 29 part-time staff. And this last year we sold over $100,000 worth of soup, um, which yeah really blew us away, especially during the pandemic. We weren't sure what would happen to us, um, but we are essential. So our staff who are on Ontario Disability Services got called essential and they came back and continued to cook. And we pivoted online and we started selling our soup online and uh, we did okay. 
I'm just gonna put, here we go. Did I skip over a slide? No? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> anyway, a social enterprise. I don't know about you, but I had never heard of one before the raw carrot. Um, but basically, it has. See, I did go over a slide, didn't I? Oh, here we go. Sorry about that. <laughs> Last time I had someone else doing the slides, so this is uh, throwing me for a loop here. Okay, we are on this slide. We're organized now. Sorry about that. So impact and income. So we aren't nonprofit because we do have people purchasing soup, but really we are um, out there to impact the community. So instead of just asking for more funds all the time, we wanted to create something that people could buy, right? And we needed to create jobs. So there had to be something that people could buy and enjoy. Um, so we came up with soup. And it was through the support of the sales that supports the business. And you get to take home yummy, tasty gourmet soup. So it's a win for you as you get to purchase soup. And it's a win for our staff. So here's a picture of some of our soup. But the soup um, isn't really the goal. Really, the soup is just um, the vehicle to the goal. People are our goal. Providing people with meaningful, um, employment and dignity and participation in their community. It means the increased food and livelihood security. Really on Ontario Disability Services, you can't pay for rent and healthy food um, in Southern Ontario. It's just not enough money. And we believe that we've been called to this ministry to fulfill the biblical mandate to assist the poor and oppressed in the community. With more than just a handout, we wanted to provide a hand up. In Isaiah 1, 17, it says, learn to do Sorry, learn to do right, seek justice, defend the oppressed, take up the cause of the fatherless, and plead the case of the widow. So the impact. We continue to be passionate about the impact of this ministry because there are multiple levels that it's making an impact on. Our staff often told us that the money for working is nice, but one of the greatest impacts is having a job and being part of something having a place to belong and to engage in meaningful work. So here's some more of our staff. This is Paul trying to eat the asparagus. But don't worry, we do wear our masks. These shots were all taken pre-COVID. They now don't get to all chop together. They all have to be sort of spread out in the bottom of the church, but they do still like to come together and Paul still tries to make everybody laugh. Um, so we've had three staff transition on to other work due to their success at the Raw Carrot. Eight have continued to be employed over the long term, and they've brought themselves out of poverty. Staff receive an average of 20% more income a month and report a better quality of life due to the social engagement and the dignity of work. So next I have another video with you. This one I watched just after I started back in February. And I was excited to be brought on and be part of this mission, but it wasn't until I really heard from the staff, because I'm up in the headquarters, I do administration, I reply to emails. But when I heard from the staff, and when I go down and visit them, I'm reminded why we do this work. So this is Lori. Oh, do I have Connection. A real connection to people that you know that they won't turn you back on you. You can always count on them. If you have problems, you can talk to them and they understand where you're coming from. The World Care is a foundation for people that are on disability pension to help support them with their finances. And also, it also gives us an opportunity to learn. There's no really secret to the Rock Care. It's a fun atmosphere. Everybody gets to know everybody. We like helping each other. We like um, communicating with each other. We like helping each other. We like doing things together. And it's a all in one. It's like a big family. And we all care about each other's feelings and what's going on in it. hanging out together. We drove up to Mount Forest for a training and we were in the car. She has had to retire due to her health. We haven't been able to 
keep her on just from her, she can't stand and chop in the kitchen anymore, but she really does still want to work. So she's really hopeful for another job where she can work and she can sit down. But please help keep Lori in your prayers as she continues to navigate this transition and also during COVID. And she still struggles with her disabilities every day, right? But um, yeah, so she's, she's lovely though. So, so we talked about the staff impact, now the church impact. So studies have shown that churches with a mission are making a tangible difference. We're more engaged and passionate about what they're doing. We are filling the church. Um, three or four times a week, the kitchen's being used. Um, twice a week at each of our locations, people are coming in and out and purchasing soup, chatting with our staff, and engaging the community. Um, the benevolent fund now is not used as much because people have this income. Four of our staff are from the church, um, the Paris Presbyterian Church in Paris. And I'm only touching on the Paris site really because that's the one I'm working out of, but there's four different sites. Um, we'll get to that point in a second. So the community impact, as I mentioned before, the community now can come into the church and buy their soup. Uh, we're partnering with organizations, schools, community groups that would never necessarily partner with a Christian organization or the traditional church. Um, and the retails, we're in too many retailers to even mention because again, each site is located in different areas and all those retailers have heard the raw carrot story and we always talk about being focused on Jesus. Um, so that's just you know, another impact that we have in the community. And then as we mentioned in the video, in 2016, we started getting approached by other organizations who were interested in the raw carrot model. So that's why we now have four sites. We're in Mount Forest, Kitchener, Woodstock, and Paris, and we're partnered with the churches here. So the Interkit Presbyterian, um, the Mennonite Central Committee of Ontario, Mount Forest United Church, Paris Presbyterian, and we also and supported in part by the Paris, or sorry, by the Presbyterian Church of Canada. Um, so we couldn't do it without that support. And I do have another video. Um, again, I could sit here and talk all day, but it's really hearing from the staff to me that really um, shares the story of the raw carrot. So this one, we'll get to hear Amanda. Yeah, the rutabaga is the hard one to cut. Um, but we use a lot of carrots. <laughs> yes, coming to work, um, it makes me happy because get to hang out with people I like and gives me something to do instead of being bored. It's changed my life by giving me more money to help with uh, bills, food. I have pets, I spend it on my dogs. I spend it on groceries for food to eat and sometimes my mom. <laughs> This is the type of job I like to do besides working with kids. Some days we have to put on a happy face if we're not too happy because of our little, what else is going on in our life. But other than that, it's pretty happy in there. you can see she does talk <laughs> I know when you're down in the kitchen we were asking them questions one day and she really didn't want to answer them but she will answer a question and she's lovely and she's been working with us on and off for pretty much the whole time we've been running and I think she now has the confidence to think about going to school I think she loves working with kids so she's hoping that might be something else she can pursue but right now she's she works hard chopping the rutabaga and all the other vegetables in the kitchen um, so this slide is really just sharing how you can be partner with us and be involved. Um, so I have shared the story because I think the more people hear about the story and hear about people who are mar marginalized and understand. Um, I know I came into it not really understanding what it was like being Ontario Disability Services. Everybody's like, well, don't they do okay on that? And the reality is they really, they really don't. Um, especially if people want to work and can work, but it is hard to find employment in the traditional workplace. Um, so we call ourselves a supported workplace where we understand the challenges um, that people bring. Um, host a soup sale. We love to come back with our coolers full of soup and invite your community out and we come. We've also been doing virtual soup sales where you tell your community, share it on Facebook, and then we 
do a soup drop and <laughs> we bring out all the soup and you distribute to your community. So we've done that a few times and that all that money, like I said, goes back right to the staff um, and pays for their. So the more soup we sell, the more hours they work and they want more hours. We, they would work more if we could give them more hours, but we can only sell so much soup at the moment. Um, buy our soup. We did bring a little bit. I did say that Carluc pretty much sold us or bought us out. We only have a little bit left. I have some chicken noodle and some sausage Italian soup. So we're in a white car over here if you want to come take some soup home today. Um, you can make a donation, become a monthly donor. Um, we are a ministry of the Paris Presbyterian Church and that supports our growth. We are hoping to open a fourth site, sorry, a fifth site um, in the sort of watered down Dundas area with an Anglican church. So that'll be pretty cool. Um, and at the front door, I did have a newsletter sheet if you want to sign up for our newsletter. We send it out just monthly over email, um, and that's a good way to stay connected and hear more about what we're doing. Um, so again, thank you so much for having me and hearing about the raw carrot. And just as Amanda said, you know, it changed her life. So that's really exciting to be part of that. So thank you so much for having me today and enjoy your Thanksgiving weekend. I'll just close in prayer. Father God, thank you so much for today and this beautiful uh, weather we have and the people gathered here today in your name. Uh, we thank you for the work of the Raw Carrot and the individuals that have been touched by them. Father, we pray that not only they'd be, um, feel the dignity to work, but they'd also come to know you. And we pray that you continue to bring people to us who need that, that dignity of work, Father, and um, uh, open avenues of sales and different ideas, Father. And be with each person here as they go and who have gathered online. I just ask they be with them during their coming week. And uh, be with Pastor Nancy, who's away on vacation. We just ask that she would have a blessed time away and bring her home safely. Um, in your name, amen. just stand as uh, we close for a benediction. So as we rise from this place and step into a new week, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May his face shine upon you. May he be gracious to you. May his face turn toward you and may you know his peace. Amen. <laughs>